Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 170-something of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm here with Rory Lowe. Woo! Stand-up comedian and professional wooer. I'm a big Welcome wooer. to the show, mate. Thank you for having me on, Lewis. No worries. How are you feeling about this incredibly soft couch? I feel like it's going really well with your jacket. It's I know. Definitely getting the squeaks. I'm blending in. That's th- that's this whole podcast is just going to be me making jacket and couch noises. I remember the first time I met you. Uh, you had a, it was at the comics lounge, and you had a leather jacket on, and I yeah. just remember thinking, "Fuck this cunt." You don't like it? I just like leather jackets. Yeah. Like, really rub me the wrong way. You don't like them? No, I like it now because I know you. It's, not, it's fine. But like when, whenever I don't, like especially dudes, like if girls got leather jacket on, I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. But whenever I see like a like a a pr- like a proper dude with yeah, like yeah. A, a leather jacket on, I'm like, what are you <laughs> going for? Like, well, there's well that's the thing because there's there's two types of guys in leather jackets, yeah. right? There's guys that think they look good in leather jackets, so they wear one, right? Mm-hmm. But then there's another guy who doesn't have a personality, so he goes, I'm going to be the leather jacket guy. And there's people who play guitars. Yeah. Like, I love, I love, like, musicians yeah. who who haven't made it. Yeah. Who haven't made it. Yeah. And who, who insist on always dressing like a yeah. 1970s, like, rock star. They're great. I, I love it. I love it. Just leather jackets in general, I think, are very, very funny. Well, your reaction is exactly why I wear weird shit. Yeah. Because I want... Whether, like, whether these you, hippies. Whether you <laughs> like it or not, right? I don't care if you think I look good or if you think I look bad. I just want you to have a strong reaction. Either yeah. he looks fucking awesome or he looks fucking ridiculous. Yeah. You're just going favorite. for praise or compliments on the street the whole time. Absolutely. Yeah, fuck yeah. Sp- praise, people spitting on me, everything. People spitting on you? Yeah, whatever Whatever your reaction is, it has to be the extreme of either side. Because like your leather jacket is not new. No. Like that's, that's the best time to see someone in a leather jacket. You probably saw it when it was new. When they've just bought it and you're like, it's, it looks pristine. And you're yeah. like, the whole idea of you having a leather jacket is more to do with you looking tough and like cool, in yeah. my opinion, than um, like looking very sharp. Yeah. And like super, like I am I am clean and I am friendly and here is my new expensive jacket. I'm like, yo, what? what? Yeah, that's not, that's not yeah it takes about six months for the jacket to actually form to your yeah. body. And Like if I bought a j- jacket, I'd be yeah. like out on the street, like throwing it in front of cars. Yeah. And like hitting it with a chain. Be yeah, like, for we're sure. Put some character onto this thing. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I reckon I wore it like every day for like six months. Yeah, you got it. Because and I was just that be guy. Like stiff as well when you first get it. Yeah. You're like, oh, check out my funds walk. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a. <laughs> um, so, Rory, how long have you been doing comedy for? Um, I did my first ever gig in high school. Really? Yeah, I did it for the talent show in high school when how I was old? seventeen. 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 Yeah, I was well, in yeah. year twelve, and I pretty much just like did a Dylan Moran set. Yeah, like I just like copied somebody else and then wrote a couple jokes about teachers and a few uh, uh, like jokes about like students. I think that's how a lot of comedians start is just by racking other people's jokes because yeah. you don't know that that's not on yet. Yeah, because it's kind of like, because everyone else in the talent show is like playing somebody else's song. True. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And what? You're like, yo, fuck, dude, you didn't write that. So like I can easily be like, <laughs> yeah, I want to go do all this Dave Chappelle stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just do all this black material. Like, that's hey. true. See, that's something that like, you can't release someone else's song, but you can play someone else's song for other people and be yeah. like, look at And people will go, oh, he's so talented. Can't do that with jokes. No. So in music, you have like a, a intellectual property right and then you have yeah. dis- distribution right. Yeah. So you can buy just one. Really? Yeah. So like if you want to do a cover, yeah. you have to pay the dude who wrote the song to do the cover. Yeah. But you don't need to pay like the record company right because it. it's not their intellectual property oh that makes sense yeah yeah we need to set that up with jokes yeah that'd be sick well i i read like this a really database. well i read this really interesting book about this is before internet days when when stand-up first started there was no such thing as my joke your joke and they have it on the chalkboard uh no even better than that so so everyone would just do jokes and no one owned any of them and they were just jokes if you wrote a joke and and i saw it it's now my joke and everyone would do it and that would be fine because everyone was traveling yeah. no audience would see no one had any fans they were just funny people at shows right but then the culture started coming around of like hang on i wrote that that's fucking mine but how do you prove that you wrote that yeah. before there's no audio recording no video anything so 
there was this big system set up. <laughs> you just got like a, a like a, a picture with a newspaper. You're like, I ruined this joke on yeah. this day. Well, there was no way to prove it, so they had this this like mail in system of when when you write a joke, you would mail it, pay a little monthly fee to this business that would store it in a database and be like, oh, this is Rory Lowe's joke about haircuts. So you, it's proven that you own it, right? And that was the system that people used for 50 years. But then that business that, that cataloged every comedian in America's jokes went bankrupt and they sold every single joke to TV shows, to other comedians. It's pretty interesting. And then everyone's joke just became a product to be sold and that's, people just bought them. That sounds awesome. The fact that you could just like... Oh no! You pay a little bit. Yeah. No, not get paid. No, you don't get paid. Okay. No, that sounds that sounds terrible. Yeah. So all these people paid this 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 company to keep their jokes safe and their property. <laughs> keep and their then jokes that com- safe, like there's yeah. like a clown safe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like there's Locked someone away. like someone trying to like heist in. Like someone yeah. trying to break in. Like yo, we need to get that joke back. You would <laughs> get to like racist. you'd get to the penis section, which is the biggest it, yeah. section they have. Like I dick did. jokes. So when did it, when was this? This was like this was early, early like twenties, thirties. Imagine what jokes they're telling. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like now, yeah. like everyone's like, oh, fucking like airplanes were done in like what the seven seventies, eighties, nineties, maybe. But like nineteen twenties jokes. What do you talk about? Like that. That to me, like you, a you definitely you you're not making jokes about Muslim people. You don't even know they exist. You don't know, the, yeah, you're, they're not around. You'd be definitely making a lot of jokes about black people and none of them would be good. No. They'd, they'd all be, be like malicious, be evil. There'd be a lot of like, so I hit my wife today stuff. Yeah, and the crowd <laughs> would be like, yes, and then yeah, what happened? Yeah. Where's the funny bit? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, imagine writing jokes before like there were cars. Well, it's really interesting how, comedian, how stand-up comedy came out. So like... Uh, and initially it was like vaudeville shows so people it was a lot of sketches and physical comedy yeah, it was and, like burlesque, and wasn't that it? kind of yeah burlesque stuff and sketches and then the first ever like stand-up comedian who only went out there and just said funny jokes every other comedic like act looked at him and went what a lazy piece of shit <laughs> Which is fair enough, because they were like, you know, here I am, climbing up ladders, dropping buckets on my head, throwing around my partner, and you just get up and say words? Yeah. You lazy cunt. He's just on stage like, nah, see, so I was hitting my wife the other day. Yeah. <laughs> and all of the other acts just hated him, but the audience loved it, because it was new and different. That's so funny. Yeah. I, I Like, could you ever do, like, prop comedy? Uh... I no, I don't like props, but I I really like physical. Yeah. I do a little bit of physical stuff because I love Leno and Woodley. Yeah, they were my first guys, really? and I love yeah yeah. I love my favorite comedies because I love Leno and Woodley. And then as I got older, I got into Jim Jeffries and Bill Burr. Yeah, and some of my my favorite bits is when I combine the silly physical comedy with like a fucked topic. Yeah, and and put them together. Which I don't, you don't see too much of. It's generally no. one or the other. Yeah, I like absurdist act outs. I don't really have much of that because like, most of the stuff I do is like story based. So it's kind yeah. of like, oh well, I saw this guy do this, so I can just do this. Yeah. And like, do you ever, do you ever like do a bit and then you like you act it out and then afterwards someone's like, wow, you really got into that and like you really <laughs> acted that out and you're like, yeah. that's not an act out bit. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, oh yeah, I do do that, don't yeah. I? I would like to do more of that stuff, more act outs. Well, yeah, it's it's kind of good. Like that's and it's hard to do to like fully become somebody else, and then have well, really sometimes become three different people. Yeah, and you know try and try and convey to the audience like when I talk like this, that's the hairdresser, and when I talk like that, that's me, and then this is the other guy. Did you ever do acting or anything? Uh, I did drama class in high school, but I that's I'd, just because the teacher was hot, though, right? No, no, she wasn't. Hot. <laughs> she was like, no. she, there's two types of drama teachers, yeah, and she was is. the other type. <laughs> There's a like, damn, she just graduated. Yeah. And like she coming in, she got pointy ass toes and oh, a lovely yeah. perky body. You're like, For oh my sure. god, I'm fucking getting drama. And then there's like Jabba the Hut, like yeah, seventy five year one. old lady. Yeah. She got two pairs of glasses on, like one's like stuck in her titties, the other one's on her face. <laughs> You're actually describing my drama yeah? teacher. What's and I name? always um, I can't say I've fucking, fucking name. Tell me. No, nah, I'm not doing it. My teacher's name was Miss Hammond, and she looked exactly like Jabba the Hutt. And Miss we Doctor. To, we used to say that she like had a. Uh, we, <laughs> we used to say that she had lightsabers like in her rolls, and she would pull them out if anyone was like fucking around in class. That's funny. 
Yeah, I always got shitty at my drama teacher because I remember when I was in drama, she her, her her older graduated drama students put on a play, so she took the whole class paying tickets on an excursion to see it. Was it shit? Uh, it was okay, but then right, I had my when I graduated, I had my first stand up show. Yeah, where the fuck was the class? Where was the excursion? Didn't show up. Never showed up. And I know for a fact, I'm definitely her most successful drama student. Hey. Where's the excursion? I'm still waiting for That's that class of kids so that I can scar with my jokes. What material were you doing? What, in my first show? Yeah, first show. First show, I had uh, like a, a bit about me masturbating the wrong way. That's online now. Okay. That was a good bit. Uh, not Wouldn't be very kid-friendly. What else did I have? <laughs> You're like, maybe that's the reason they didn't go. Potentially. Oh, oh, they, she she, she would have got fired, but I'm just saying, you know, where's the support? I, how long did it go for? Your first hour? How long did it actually go for? Because you know how you're like, yeah, I'm going to write an hour. It yeah. goes to an hour. And then like 35 minutes in, you're like, I don't have any more jokes. Yeah. So my f- my first show, I did the same thing. of like, I've got an hour. And then the first time I did the festival. So like 12 shows. My first show actually went about 35, maybe 40 minutes. Yeah, same. And I got off and I was like, oh, Fuck! I I've stolen their money. I yeah. bombed. <laughs> but people loved it. They didn't notice, but I noticed. And then I think the I think the rest of the shows I was just rushing because I was nervous. So yeah. I had an hour, if I told the jokes properly. But I was just nervous, and I said them really fast. So I think by the end of the twelve shows, it ended up being about fifty minutes, maybe. Sick. I just for how was your first one? Exactly the same, like thirty-five, like thirty-five yeah. minutes, like in a tiny room, like everyone sat on like cushions or some shit rather yeah. than like chairs. Yeah, you know, mom and dad are there, just like oh, you should have stayed in uni. <laughs> um, and I, the closing bit that I had, yeah, um, like what uh, I would have been, it would have been seven years ago now. Closing bit that I had then, I just dug back up and redid for my new show. Yeah. So like I've like completely redone the whole thing because it I like that happens for I, sure. Well, you know when you like get an idea and you're like, oh, this is like such a good idea, and then yeah. you just don't have like the mental tools to you like deal with it. You don't have the comedic it. ability. Yeah. So um, yeah, the story was like I was driving from here, or not from here, we're in Melbourne now. I was driving from Perth to um to Brisbane for Splendor in the Grass. Yeah. With like a bunch of my mates, I was like, I just turned, I turned, I, I was 17, I had yeah. fake ID. Um, and so I couldn't get into the festival yeah, and yeah. we bought a ticket and my best mate couldn't remember my birthday. So he wrote somebody else's name on the ticket right. with, with a birthday that matched. And so I didn't get let into the festival. Yeah. We, we drove for like two and a half weeks to get from Perth to Brisbane. Oh, true. Um, and yeah, I did, didn't get in. I had to like jump the fence. Um, but which you, was, so you jumped the fence? Jumped the fence. You got in? Yeah, we got in. Great. Yeah, like I was, Love that. I got someone, some dude gave me like his, uh, um, his like volunteer jacket. Like I like we, I like jumped the fence, saw this like young dude like long hair like volunteer jacket on. I was like, look man, look I'm 17. I fucking just drove here for two weeks from Perth. Like the we ran out of petrol. I almost died seven times. Yeah. Like all these things happened. Like my girlfriend broke up with me because my mate shot himself. Like heaps of things happened. Yeah. And the dude was like, bro, fucking takes his jacket off, like Sick. snaps his wristband off, puts it around me, gives all stuff, and he goes, you fucking you go enjoy yourself. You and deserve I, it. Yeah, more he was than like, me. "You deserve it so hard." Yeah. And like, I gave, I like, we got to the gate. Like, this is before I, I met this dude. We got to the gate with all my yeah. bags. I like try to give him the ticket. The lady's like, "This name, and this, uh, and your ID don't match. Yeah. You can't come into the festival." And I was like, "Fuck that noise!" Gave my mates all my luggage. <laughs> found it like a like fence I could jump over. Yeah. Met this dude. He gave me his stuff. Went back on the other side of the gate. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, hey guys." Uh, can I help you carry any of your bags? <laughs> and my mates just gave me my bags and I just walked That's back in right. helping think. I was like, I am a fucking legend that's sick 17 broke in a splendor that's great i Loved feel like it. that's a crime that you can really respect like even if you got caught they'd be like fuck yeah mate but also you have to leave i don't want to kick you out but i'm just doing what i'm told but, but like you're a legend if you kick someone out for jumping the fence they're gonna jump the fence again yeah what can you do like they, they literally weren't even in yeah and you're like well you need to get out you're like well i'm not in yet <laughs> so as soon as i get in you can Tell me to do the same thing that I was doing before I broke the law to get in here. You don't realize but that I jumped the, the fence because you already said I couldn't <laughs> come in. And that's why I jumped the fence. You ever been chased by security before? Uh, no, but I remember one of my friends, uh, we were getting to his, this nightclub 
and one of my mates was really drunk and he couldn't get in and then he just lost it at the security guard started going you're a fucking cunt this that never screaming get, never like, get angry at a security guard and I'm guard. so embarrassed and got right in his face like fuck you and then we all got kicked out and then I was like man what'd you do that for and he goes don't worry watch this and then him and another friend swapped t-shirts only t-shirts yeah. no disguise nothing and he'd gotten in the security guard's face and gone fuck you and then we go back in line. I'm like, this is not going to work. <laughs> like this he, is ridiculous. It sounds like he just tried to show you that it works rather than... And it. he's still drunk too. Yeah. I'm like, so the original problem isn't fixed. You've just swapped t-shirts. And you know what? He got it. Worked yeah. perfectly. He looked at the security guard that he just said, fuck you, suck my dick to his face. The guy looked at him, was like, you're not that guy. And also you're not drunk. In you go. <sighs> Fuck yeah. And I was so angry that he got in doing that because it was the dumbest plan ever. I love when that happens. And so it's like, I've got a plan. And yeah. you're like, dude, that is not a good idea. And they're like, fucking trust me, bro. I've yeah. got this. And then you're like, all right, I want to watch this fall to pieces. Yeah. And it just works. And you're like, and, and you just feel, society happens you know that you're definitely not stupid, but you feel stupid. Yeah. You feel stupid for going against it. You're like, this isn't going to work. And like, now you're the idiot. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, see, man, I fucking told you so. You're like, no. Swapping t-shirts is the perfect disguise. Like, is it? I love, I love, I love fucking with bouncers. I love, I like, I love fucking with the police when they come to like parties. Yes. Like my favorite thing to do is like, as soon as I see a policeman at a party, I'm like, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to say that this is my house. Yeah. Like, it's, not my, to, uh, <laughs> it's not my house, but I'm going to talk you guys yeah. into getting the fuck out of here <laughs> while we turn the music off. That's it. Got a towel on. That's all I'm wearing. <laughs> you, just, you, see, you see the cops, and you're like, oh, great. Take all clothes off. Yeah, grab a towel from immediately, somewhere. Immediately. Hey, I'm man, like, just got out of the shower. What's going on? Oh, 100%. It's like, it's, you got to gotta fuck with them as soon as you see. Like, only wear a t-shirt. Yeah. Like no pants. No pants. Like, oh, hey guys. They're like, what are you doing? Like, my house. Can't be, can't be naked in my own house. Dude, I, I, I do what I want. <laughs> but yeah, that happens often where, where you'll get better as a comedian and rewrite bits. Like mm. one of my, one of my best bits is that wanking story that I told you about. That was also the first joke I ever wrote. Yeah. And I ended up going back, reworking it, put it in my special and it's online now. And it's, it's cause, cause just often, because I find that when, your first show, your first comedy show, you have your whole life to write, really, up yeah. until that point. So you can pull on the craziest, best stories that have ever happened to you, ever, and then tell them. And then you get good at comedy. And you go, oh, yeah. it almost that sucks. fucking story that I wasted when I wasn't good at comedy, I need to do that again. It's like, um, it's like I feel like it's a, uh, like the opposite with music. You know, like with music, they're like, yeah. the first album's always like the best album yeah. ever. And yeah. it's like, yeah, I put my whole life into this. And then like two years later, they release an album. You're like, yo, this sucks. Because they can't do that. They can't redo they it. They can't redo can't it. Redo whereas it. comedians can. I feel like co comedy, I'm, I'm so grateful that it's my passion because I will only ever get better at it. You never really see people get, you know, as long as they keep working and they keep trying to get better, you never really see people get worse. Kramer. <laughs> okay all right as long okay well as long as i don't that's do a fall that from grace. Yeah, as long that's as i don't do that but i feel like that's a pretty easy thing to avoid yeah like don't hey be, don't, don't go on a racist tirade on camera and you should still be getting better <laughs> yeah he could be the next he could have been the next george carlin we don't know that for sure i guess even ck is like jerking off of a women's faces and but like, he's and still he's like he's back he's still amazing at comedy you yeah. know what i mean like he he didn't do that on stage. So if he did that on stage, he might be worse at comedy. I would have loved to have seen his comeback as that. Like, it's his first, like, special yeah. after the whole controversy. And I would love to see him just, like, come out from the side curtains, yeah. just fully naked, just oh, beating yeah. his dick off. Like, For and, sure. like, that's how he starts. And then he just continues to and jerk there's no off. jokes. No, it's there's just no jokes. 40 minutes of his the face just, just slowly like, like, getting and, redder. And then he comes <sighs> and, like, everyone just stands up and they're like, fucking, yeah, he's back. Bro, he's I back, would, man. I would pay so much money to see that. <laughs> would he would make amazing? bank. Put it on Pornhub. <laughs> oh. He'd be a millionaire, for sure. Who's, who's one comedian that you haven't seen that you'd love to watch? Oh man, I, I would love like. to love to watch Patrice O'Neill, but that'll never happen. Because <laughs> um, yeah. I think he's the greatest. It used to be Bill Burr, but then I saw him. Yeah. Um, I saw him in LA. 
Um, Live up to expectation? Oh, exceeded. Yeah. Like, I, I saw him and I reckon it made me better at comedy. Yeah. Because I was like, holy fuck. Like, you know when you... when Have you ever been to America? Yeah. yeah. And seen stand-up and yeah. you just see how good you really can get at it? Yeah. And you're like, fuck, that's what it is. Like, I went to the Star in yeah. LA um and so i saw rogan play there and i saw like kill tony one night and that was really good yeah and then like obviously like theo vaughn and like christa yeah. lee and everyone just like rocking up halfway through the um the night but yeah i, I totally i totally agree yeah but there's there's other times as well i watch comics and i'm like fuck you i'm better than you like, i had a bit of that too i do and it like it, it like it pisses me off because i'm like no like i'm not like they're like in the states, they're at the store, they're like doing like the late spot or whatever, yeah. like and, and they're probably having a bad day out of the last like thirty five years that they've True. done this. But I see like two minutes of it and I'm like, no, nah, fuck you, man, give me a spot. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, but it's it is it is like that of like, I feel like that coming from Australia and then seeing people in New York and in LA where you can gig five nights a week every night and you see you you see that the, the almost comedians who might not appreciate what they have and how good they can get. Oh yeah. You see that and and then you you come you're coming from Australia where you can maybe do one club spot a week and then open mic nights and you go, "Do you understand how fucking good I would be if I could do this five nights a week?" And that'd be so for, sick. For 10 years. Yeah. So I think that's that I think that ultimately that's why I want to go there. It's just to get really good. LA or New York? New York for sure. Yeah. Cuz LA I don't understand how you would start gigging regularly there because you're competing with not only amazing comedians, but like the most famous people ever in the world. Why yeah. should you get a spot? Whereas New York, New York, I worked out, Oh, I reckon I know how I could become a regular at these clubs in like one or two months. I could work that out. LA, I got there and I was like, Oh, I'll never perform on these stage oh, until yeah. I've done six movies. Yeah. A hundred percent. I did a open mic night in LA yeah and whew, that put into perspective yeah so much yeah like i think it was like it was during the day fuck uh it was, I think already it was, i'm yeah. out oh fuck yeah, that. yeah dude I, I, this, it's a great one it's like 5 30 maybe <sighs> yeah. six o'clock it's in a cafe um yep. the cafe has like big big windows like floor to ceiling windows and so all going the outside. lights coming in yeah, you can see yeah. all the cars going behind you yeah um the stage if there was a stage there's not a stage but no. the stage yeah. is the performing space yeah 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 the designated funny zone yeah. is um like right with your with your back to the glass window so you can just everything's just oh, moving so distracting yeah. like people walking past going oh what's going on there oh nothing interesting all right the only people in the room are the people doing the show waiting for their turn yes everyone going, oh, i wish this guy would shut up so i can do my bit everyone is writing so oh. they're like everyone is writing jokes Not that they're good. about to do in front of people who are writing jokes that they're about to do yeah and the cafe is still fully operational <laughs> so you can hear like Shh. yeah you can hear Shh. what would you like ding <laughs> like you could like it's like you're yeah. like there's a fucking casino's worth of noise coming in and out yeah. of here and the dude who is hosting it is like, he looks like someone who went to a Grateful Dead concert and yeah. like couldn't find the exit. <laughs> like he's, he's got there. like, a, he's kind yeah. of bald and gray hair, but yeah. he's still got a ponytail. Yeah. Like we're in LA, he's got a tie dye shirt on and he opens it up and he goes, <clears throat> so <clears throat> um, Jesse who usually hosts this uh, isn't here. So you guys can just come up when you want. <laughs> and I'm like, you know those moments in your life where you're like, wow, this is so fucked. I've got to, I should definitely yeah. leave. And then there's those other moments where you're like, wow, this is so fucked. I have to stay to just see yeah. what happens next. Yeah. So I, st I stayed there for like 25 minutes. And then uh, like I was billed as like, yeah. like this big international act. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. dude, you can't bill anyone as a big international act like in this the, the and beans, open mic the beans in this cafe have got more clout than i do for being <laughs> international like, because everyone sitting there goes if he's such a big act why the, why the fuck, fuck is, is he here, here? <laughs> and i got up and i had a great set i was like really stoked it was like yeah. there's like this fat black dude like asleep on the couch next to me yeah and like you know like somehow skinny ginger white dude on the far side like writing like so much 
and because like the joke stealing culture there so much i was like man you guys are just stealing these yeah and like just having a good time and like i loved it but at the same time how on earth someone would develop from that i don't know scene how you get it and uh, get is, out it, of that it's unbelievable yeah. yeah like it's one thing like yeah maybe you get a little bit better at comedy but like how do you then graduate to the next yeah. clubs yeah. like new york i got it and i understand how it would work i, I see how that would happen but la I, like like i left yeah. that gig to go to the store so i left that way yeah. to the store and was like there is no way yeah the bouncers even letting those dudes into this building, yeah. <laughs> let alone letting them get on stage. Yeah, for sure. It's different, different level. It's it's crazy. I did a I did a brutal open mic in in New York, uh, that was similar to that with just only comedians. Yeah. This and that, but but the comedy style in America is because there's so many different types of people. You can kind of like joke about black people about different cultures much more freely because everybody knows that you you've definitely at least interacted with those yeah, cultures. yeah yeah whereas 100%. australia if you come out stuck on telling like a white guy telling jokes about black people yeah australians who have never met a black person in life go oh is this racist i don't know yeah. i just won't laugh to be safe yeah 100 so, i love i love black people man i like i love them like so much like, yeah i my one of my I, re I think one of my comedy dreams would be yeah. to gig in a like a black room Oh man, I almost I I I got a a friend that I knew in New York wanted me to come to Harlem. Yeah. And I was like I'd be like fuck, fuck yeah. yeah, but something else came up and I was so disappointed that I didn't get to do like a heart because it would have been he he said it was like man, you and me will be the only white people there and I was like fuck, if I can make them laugh, yeah. I'm good. I went I did go to like a like a urban show yeah. or whatever you call them when I was in um Hollywood, but like I want to perform. Yeah. Like, because like, yeah. black people just laugh. Like, black people, yeah. like, 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 they laugh on a level that white people feel guilty about. Yes. You know, like, 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 dudes, like, they're running around, they're yeah. slapping each other. Like, you watch, like, deaf, like, deaf jam, like, clips and stuff. Yeah. You're like, they don't stay in their chairs. Dude, the chairs don't stay on the floor. Like, yeah. in some cases, you're like, this is crazy. That's a funny joke. And yeah. they chuck oh. a chair. And then you do, like, you see, like, you know, like, white people shows. Like, mm -hmm, yes. Well done. That's for Another me. joke, please, sir. <laughs> Jolly good on the funny there, man. Please uh, fill me up with the comedy. <laughs> but yeah, the, the open mic that I did, it was fucking brutal like that. And uh, they have those jokes that you can talk about other things. But with that, when you're a new comedian and you're trying to do those jokes, often they just come out really fucked. Yeah. So this old guy gets up. So before... This is in was, New York, right? This is in New York. This, this uh, Jersey girl got up. She was a bigger girl. Yeah. And she got up. All she did, she was hilarious. She did jokes about being fat, jokes about this, jokes about that, but not in like a cringy way that you sometimes see. She was fucking amazing. I saw her and I was like, I want to talk to this girl because she's awesome. And then she's sitting there. And then after her, a 60-year-old dude gets up and he tells some of the most racist jokes I've ever heard in my life. Just one-liners. And he starts going in on, on fat girls and fucking fat chicks and i can't even remember the jokes but they were so brutally unfunny and just kind of mean but then he ends one of the fat girl jokes looks at the fat girl who talked about being fat and goes right <laughs> so mean and she goes fuck you man suck my dick you're a fucking asshole starts crying and then storms out of the room That's leaves so in front of all the other comedians and then he does five more minutes and then somehow wins the crowd back. Amazing. And people clap him afterwards. And I, I remember seeing that. I was like, if that happened in Melbourne, he would be cancelled. There'd be posts on Facebook. Other comedians would never book him again. But in New York, it was just like, oh, he made a fat girl cry. But that other, that his closer was pretty good. So good on him. But I, I feel like that's very New York. Oh, yeah. I feel like New York, like straight up, it's kind of like, yo, if a fat girl doesn't cry at the comedy show, <laughs> yeah. is it really a comedy show? Like, I feel like like New York, especially. This is why I would prefer to be in LA, right? Like, personally, because I'm like I'm like a happy like oh, yeah. everyone. Let's hug, bro. Yeah. Let's all go to the beach. We'll have yeah. a smoke. Like, let's eat some cake, man. Like, let's yeah. all fucking get along. And I feel like that's what California is like. Yes, well, New, for sure. New York is very much just like, hey, fuck you. I'm walking here. Like, yeah. And you're like, okay, cool. And that's why I like that's New York. Like I've yeah. got, I came back with a whole bit on how New York was the rudest place I've ever been in my life. And it's the most inspiring shit I've ever seen. <laughs> like, we're not working hard enough. We need to be more cunty. Yeah, 100%. Like, people over there, like, like you better have a severe hold on your dreams or oh. someone's gonna come over there and 
crucify you yeah. and just be like, you are never ever good. You're not even gonna watch a, a stand up special on yeah. Netflix again. That's yeah. how much someone ruined your dreams. Oh yeah, Pe- people there, and even just like on a on a normal small interaction level are so fucking rude and mean. Like I remember, I, I was just trying to buy something and I didn't understand uh, like how they do their pricing. And just like a normal, yeah, fine like questions. No tax. And yeah, the tax thing. Yeah. I got hung up on the tax thing. I was like, oh, so how does it how does it work? And he goes, if you don't understand how it works, don't come into my store and try to buy something. And I went, oh, fuck. And he could have explained it in five seconds, but he spent ten seconds telling me to fuck off. And I thought that is awesome. <laughs> that is so great. That's the level of cunt no. I aspire to be. That'd ruin my week. <laughs> I left going, that's fucking awesome. No, I'd ruin and that'd make you just ruin your week. I'm Why, so, I'm how so could sensitive. anyone be so mean? I'm too sensitive. Yeah. I'm like so sensitive when it comes to that stuff. Like, like I want everyone to like me. Yeah. Like, I don't want anyone to be like mean to each other. Yeah. Like, I want like utopia. Like, and I yeah. feel like it's totally achievable as well. I'm like, no, nah, guys, come on. Like, we can all be friends. Yeah. Like, I, f- I feel like Barney. Yeah, like, right. Like, I feel like a kid's fucking like <laughs> TV character that I'm yeah. like, yeah, come on, guys, let's all just hug and sing a song. See, <laughs> like, I I agree with fine. you. I think that there can be utopia, but my method's different. I just think yeah. as long as everyone's pointing a gun at each other, no one will shoot it. That's fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, speaking of like, I guess like not really doing. So I was in the airport in yeah. um, fuck, where was I? Uh, Malaysia. Yeah. No, Thailand. Yeah. Doing shows in Thailand, and. The terrorist alarm went off while we were in the Ooh. airport, and it was and like if it was there, I would freak out. Well, this was the thing, like same what you said before, like everyone's got a gun in each other, so no one shoots. Everyone froze, like yeah. no one moved at all. Like the whole th- the whole thing went. Everyone just stopped. Like people were like mid walk. Were just, you like, supposed stopped. to evacuate, or what do you? What were you supposed to do? I don't know what you're supposed to do. Yeah, but no one reacted. It was like we were all like gazelles in the yeah. desert, and like one of us has seen a lion, and it's like, yo, whoever runs first gets fucked. Is gonna make this real. Like it yeah. was kind of like we were all just like so still, just like I just fucking hope this alarm goes off. Yeah, or something explodes over there. Like. <laughs> As long as we don't have to acknowledge the fact that yeah. the alarm is going off. And people were so scared. And, like, adults were scared. Kids didn't give a fuck. Like, that was yeah, the best part about it. it. Like, one yeah. kid, like, jumped out from out of a bush and was like, no, 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 like, shooting a gun and stuff. Wow. And I was, like, I was, like, so scared until the security guards tackled him. Um, but, like, <laughs> like, like, st- st- like, airports in Asia, I just find, like, so gnarly. Yeah, so hectic. Like, I'm, like, I don't trust. Well, because they're, they're like, they're very open, like, Hey, welcome to Thailand. Uh, if we find anything in your bags, we will kill you and yeah. you will die. And it says it right here on the sign. If you come in with any drugs or any weapons, we'll chop your head off and put it in a newspaper. Enjoy your stay. Yeah. It's fucking scary. It is scary, but then there's also pigeons in the airport. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, who are you catching? <laughs> you're not catching any... You're not catching the cartel here. It's like, what, you'll, fucking, you'll let the bird flew in, yeah, but not cocaine? There's four pigeons over there eating a Mars bar. And like, <laughs> you think that you're stopping like these like drug Pablo Escobar yeah. motherfuckers coming in. Like, you ain't stopping shit. You could buy weed outside. Anyways, Thailand. Yeah, or, or you just have a whole bunch of people going, Bob Marley, Bob Marley. And you're like, well, then there you yeah, go. Yeah, it's a reggae bar, man. As soon as I got to Thailand, I was like, I put my stuff in the hotel. Did you I, smoke weed in Thailand? Yeah. You're insane. No, I'm not. No, You're it's... fucking insane. No, I would I... never. No, it's just so easy, man. Like <laughs> It's easy. I'm not saying that you shouldn't try it because it's hard. I'm saying because they'll chop your dick off. No, it's so easy, man. Like you like, I, I literally put all my stuff in the hotel. Like I, I was in that country for like 90 minutes. And yeah. I had a split. I was like, fuck You're it, crazy. Ready to go. Like got to the hotel. You're going to be the next Chappelle Corby. <laughs> put all my stuff in the, in the room. Yeah. Called the cab. Literally said to the dude, I was like, reggae bar. Yeah. And he's like, yeah? I'm like, yeah. He's like, Bob Marley? I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. That's where we're going. We're going to Bob Marley right now. Yeah. So we get to this, we get to this, we drive up to this thing, like big old, like three story building. Yeah. That's like one story's red, one story's yellow, one story's green. Like, yo. This so is that's dead. just like putting to the, all the cops out there, please raid us. Scoop up <laughs> like, the tourists. Yeah, We've got them. Like, it, I, I got worried when I saw the building. Yeah. Because I was like, this is too obvious. That's like, the biggest is, please arrest me yeah, building like, this ever. Is, like, they're definitely, there's, there's got to be an undercover cop in they here. They would be paying them off for sure oh, to stay course. away. So like I walk in, 
right? I like walk up the steps. Yeah. There's a like a balcony area. There's no one in this building as well, by the way. There's yeah. like no one behind the bar. But somehow they can pay the rent on a three story building. Yeah. There's like no one except yeah. for this one dude. Yeah. Right. One dude. He has two pizzas. Yeah. There's two pizzas, but they're takeaway pizzas. They're from a different place. This is why yeah. I find so funny. And it's one dude eating two pizzas from a different shop. And I walk in and he goes, Hey, man, you want a slice of pizza? I was <laughs> like, Either you are the best <laughs> undercover cop in the whole world, yeah. or you are high as fuck. Yeah. And I was like, nah, I don't want any pizza. And he's like, you want something else? I was like, yeah. And then oh, he goes, boom, and he points. And all of a sudden, this dude popped out from behind a bar yeah. with like four or five different like newspaper wrappers. Looked like he was selling fish and chips. Yeah. And I was like, sick. <laughs> I walked over there. He's like, how much you want? And I was like, how much you got? And he was like, this, 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 this. I was like, ah, oh, sick. I'll take that one. He's like, you want to smoke here? I was like, fuck no. No way. I'm no <laughs> back way. to my hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. With it in your ass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, straight up. See, that, that makes me think that being a drug dealer in a country like that would be so easy because all you have to do to make sure you're not serving an undercover cop is only serve white people oh, that yeah. look like tourists and then you'll be sweet. So the, all, all the police need to do is hire white people as undercover cops and they will shut down the drug trade in 10 minutes well Thailand's one of those places where it's like you pay them all off oh yeah it's so bribe like, city yeah there. they're like they don't really give a fuck if yeah. people are selling weed and stuff because they they want tourists to go buy it so that they can like you know get a whole year's worth of wage yeah. off this one dreadlock rasta man <laughs> it's pretty crazy over there I, I went I went to Thailand and I just uh, as a tourist and I just kind of felt a little bit guilty like just walking around no, and, and no. seeing, I was like, we've wrecked their culture. We, we didn't wreck it. it. Yes, me, we me did. And you didn't do it. I know, but like the whole thing of 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 not colonization and shit, the tourism aspect of all these people walking around selling shit to white people. Do you really think that's what they want to be doing, bro? Sometimes I'm on stage living out my dreams, and I'm like, is this really what I want to be doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's true. Do you ever, I don't, yeah. Dude, I give a fuck about how that dude got in that job. Like, it's yeah. not like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah, you got there. Like, some people didn't. True. You know what I mean? Like, some people didn't get to that job. Like, some, yeah. like, some, pe some dude over there is jerking off dicks for 30 ring it, man. Like, you know what That's I mean? That's true. Like, there's definitely, like, been 10 singlets on the massage parlor. Like, yeah. you pick one. I'd be like, dude, I'm selling stubbies on the street. Yeah, that's right. Me and my girl went to a massage parlor and there were signs everywhere that said, no sex, massage only. Yeah. And my girlfriend pointed it and she goes, oh, uh, is, that, uh, is that because lots of people ask? You say, yeah, lots of people ask. And she goes, oh, so is that the sign to stop them from asking? She goes, no, 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 we do it. You want? <laughs> no. <laughs> I went I was in when I was in Malaysia I got I went again just went to get a massage like a regular massage. Yeah. Uh and like 5 minutes into the massage like I knew I fucked up because it's like the worst massage ever. Like yeah. she's barely touching me. Yeah. I'm like oh, she's no. just going she's just doing the obligatory 5 minutes waiting making you comfortable enough to ask. I felt uncomfortable because I knew that that's what was going on. Yeah. I was like I ju I actually wanted a fucking yeah. massage. Yeah. Like I like I'm stressed. I want a massage and she's like oh turn over turn over and so like i'm like what are you gonna do fucking massage my stomach yeah and she's like oh you want some of this and i was like no way yeah like, i definitely don't want any of that she's like yeah you do you want some of this i was like no i fucking don't oh, so she was trying to sell you on it yeah this is the thing <laughs> yeah you and she's like you're in the sex trafficking and she's like no i'm just yeah, passionate about hand jobs yeah 100 percent. i'm like no i don't want it she's like dirty ring it i'm like wait that's ten dollars <laughs> change your mind real yeah, quick i'm like i don't i don't <laughs> <laughs> like I don't want a hand job, but that was so cheap. I have to think about getting one now. You know what I mean? It's, it like, is like when you see a really like, good what? bargain at, yeah. at Kmart, and you're like, "Oh, I don't need a hand steamer, the, well, dude, but it's only twenty bucks." The worst thing about the whole thing is, was I was like, "Nah, I don't want any." And then she goes, "Okay, twenty ring it." I'm like, "You, you're not supposed to haggle me down." <laughs> like I'm supposed to be like, "No, yeah. that hand job's too expensive. I want a cheaper hand job." And I'm, yeah. and she's like, "No, you want a cheaper hand job?" I was like. Seven dollars fifty. That poor girl. In her mind, she can't even conceive that it would be possible for a white tourist to come in and not want a hand job. Well, this. So is you're saying no, and she goes, "Oh, you must be haggling." I have oh, twenty ringgit. Yeah. And then I was like, "No, I don't want one." And she's like, "Okay, what about blowjob?" And I was like, "What is the price of the blowjob?" <laughs> <laughs> and what was it? Same price as the hand job. Oh, bargain. Yeah, man. I had Before she sucked my dick, I explained to her how uh, <laughs> economics works. <laughs> no, she like, same thing. I was like, man, that's like, 
that's just ridiculous. Yeah. And then I, uh, I told all the comics because I, I obviously I definitely don't want to get a blowjob of someone who's offering seven dollar fifty blowjobs. No way. That's not a. That's no. not a. That's not a good place to be at. Um, but I was talking to the like. The yeah, age- I've always thought that like if 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 I'm seeing a prostitute. I'm seeing the most expensive one I can find. Oh, yeah. You don't want the cheapos. Yeah. Like, if I'm sleeping with a prostitute, it's because I met her in a bar and I didn't know she was a prostitute. Yeah, like an escort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, after we finish fucking, some, like, big giant dude kicks in the door and is like, you owe me $2,000. I'm like, I'm fine with this. Yeah. Like, as long as I didn't go up to her and be like, yo, I got, like, Thirty-seven dollars. Like no beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> like, looking at how many coins I've got in my yeah. hand, and I'm like, is that enough? No way. You know, fuck, I'm going to Thailand. <laughs> but see, what I was, what the, the thing that was weird is because I was yeah. telling the comics, I was like, yo, this happened. And they were like, ah, oh, yeah, bro. She just wanted that pink dick. And I was like, what did you fucking say? What? And he was like, yeah, the pink dick, you know, like white boy dick. I was like, we need to pull this conversation back a little bit. Is that your racial slur for us? Pink dicks? Pink dicks. And, and they were like, yeah, that's what we call you guys. We call you guys pink dicks. That's I'm like, that's awesome. Like, I feel like only white people are going to be like, what a great racial slur to have. That's true. Like, it, Any other think, race goes, that's what you guys call us? Racist motherfuckers. Yeah, and and we like, just go, pink dick? That's good cracker. I need to, I that's need to great. write a whole bit about this. <laughs> that's nice and fun and light. Yeah, pink, pink dick. dick, it's a nice, like it's, it's jovial. Yeah. You know, like, I don't really think, there's a lot, there's a fair few, like, racial slurs that I feel like are too happy of a word yeah. to use as like a racial slur. <laughs> I'm obviously not going to start listing them off. Though. Oh yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was waiting for that. Oh, yeah, it's like honky. I guess that's for, that's for like honky. a white, a white yeah. dude. Like honky. Too fun. It, like, like, yeah. <laughs> there's, like there's, it, there's something in the word that's like, this just sounds fun to say. Oh yeah, N word hits you in the chest. Oh yeah. You know what? You say that and you feel it. But like honky, cracker, pink yeah. dick, you're like, woo. Some Even fun. some like some like Asian ones, you know. I mean, I don't know if they are really like racial slur, but when like white people are like oh ching chong and stuff like that, I'm like, yeah. again, these are like it's too on- fun. Yeah, they're like onomatopoeias. Yeah, you know, like this is just a like a fun word. That, like I feel like sometimes racists aren't racist. They're just like hooked on the sound. <laughs> That's true because there are there are some that you hear and and you just can't help but laugh and then go never gonna say that. But oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I remember I went I went to Thailand uh, and this is the the only place that I went that I felt bad about. I went I went and so we saw a ping pong show. Yeah, with me and my girlfriend. Okay, so this because I was gonna go watch one, but I was by myself. Yeah, and my my girlfriend was like, "Yeah, you should go watch one. You should definitely go watch one. Yeah. It'll be a great experience." And I was like, "I can't go watch it by myself." Yeah, you I can't. can't. <laughs> I can't. So, I gotta go with the boys or something yeah. and like have fun, but I can't just be like. I just wanted to see it. Yeah. Like, it's fuck that. Well, I, I do. I do a whole bit about it in my in one of my shows, uh, one of my tours. But like, I I went in expecting like what you like. What do you think of when you think of ping pong show? Dude, what do you think was? I'm happen? thinking like the whole room is like purple. Like yep. there's like like blue and purple neons everywhere. Yeah. It's really sparsely populated. So there's maybe like twelve people yeah. over like thirty tables, yeah. and only like. Four of those people are sat together. Everyone else is sat by themselves. Yep. Uh, dudes with long coats on, big hats. Yep. Uh, they are. There's one. Can't gi- see anybody's hands, but everyone's going yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. There's one girl behind the bar that yep. you hope is in the show, but she's definitely not yep. in the show. Yeah. Um, and her boss keeps going. When are you gonna get up? She's like, yeah, never. I have yeah, standards. Yeah. Um, there's a guy sweeping the stage like <laughs> like when i walk in there's a dude with a mop yeah like just not a mop, broom no, a, mop. a mop like whatever <laughs> yeah whatever show just happened i've just missed yeah. someone's like mopping it up um and then like there'll be those like uh tinsel glitter curtains yeah so it wouldn't yep. be like a proper curtain it'd just be like yeah like like shredded glitter fabric like yep. behind yeah um and probably a disco ball that's uh-huh. on a low ceiling yep yeah, and yep. and that's like that's I've walked into this space. My yep. feet, my feet are sticking. Yep. There's like a okay. <laughs> yep. Every time I walk, and, and, and the they girl don't comes have good out. Beer. And what do you think she does? Um, it's called ping pong show. I mean, I know that she's like shooting ping pong balls out of the vagina, uh-huh. but there's got to be a lead up. Okay. You can't open with. <laughs> you can't open that. Okay. Can you? Oh, who's here? Can you open that? Yeah, I'll open that. One second. Is that is that Luke? You reckon is that Luke? Luke Kidgel? Is that Luke Kidgel? 
No, nope, it's just the wind, ladies and gentlemen. It's just the wind. <laughs> That's quality. So yes, right. So how what so I think Rory, would happen is like yeah, she's she might she's she's clothed. She's yep. like she's pretty much clothed. Uh-huh. She's got something lightly dressed around her shoulders. Mm-hmm. You know, like maybe like a like an yep. elderly woman would, but it's yep. a little bit more see-through and she's like slowly dancing and taking it off. Yep. And then I guess she would have to somehow sit down and put her legs in stirrups. Yeah, and then start shooting And then start balls, shooting yeah. people balls out. Yeah. But question I've never thought about up until this moment. Are the ping pong balls already in there or does mm. she put them in there? Okay. So Rory, what you described is exactly what I was thinking was going to happen. Yeah. And it is nothing like what you said. No? No. Is that like fireworks and shit? Bro, you're still thinking way too happy. I walked in <laughs> and bro, have you ever seen a documentary about sex trafficking? The bad the bad kind? Like, like not the consensual kind? Like it's taken. Like taken. <laughs> I walked into a fucking dungeon. There was no one in there except for me and my girlfriend. The minute I walked in, I was like, I don't want to be here. I'm going to die. The woman on stage, there's no ping pong balls. She's not sexy. She doesn't want to be there, clearly. She's hunched over herself. There's no ping pong balls. She's pulling fairy lights out of her pussy. And they're on. They're on. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you laugh, but I saw it and I felt, I was like, oh, this is the sex trafficking they tell you about that is destroying lives. And and they sat us down because they saw as soon as we stepped in, we didn't want to be there. Then they give us a menu. I've got, got a whole menu. joke about it. Oh, you do not want to. One side of the Ugh. menu, they got drinks, and they're all really expensive, like $20 Australian drinks, real expensive. On the other side, other do they side, have shit that she's going to do uh-huh. or pull out of her pussy? Items. And I'm like, why are there drinks, and then why are there items? And the woman goes, you buy a drink, you choose what go in the pussy. <laughs> and bro, there were birds, lizards, fire, scissors, fire. ping pong. Fuck and yeah. and I just got up and I just fucking me and my girlfriend left and we apologized to the girl on stage. She didn't. That was like some feed my kids desperation shit. Don't go to a ping pong show. It's not fun. Maybe you just went to a shit one. I hope so. <laughs> I ch- honestly really hope so. Maybe you just went to like the. But I don't think so because it was on the Bangla Road, the red light district yeah, Bangla, where yeah, that Bangla happens. Road, yeah. And it was fucking dire. I, I still think about that and wonder if she's okay. Because, like, in my mind, it's definitely a spectacle. It's not. I'm sorry to break your heart. Broke my heart. I'm it's, still going to go watch one. Oh, you shouldn't. <laughs> I'm still going to go watch one. Don't give him any money. It's like someone said to me the other day, because, like, um, when I was in Thailand as well, I was like, yeah. I want to go ride an elephant. Yeah. And the dude is like, don't do that. I did that, and I felt real bad about it, because I, I didn't know. I learned about it afterwards. I... Wouldn't give a fuck. Really? Oh, I. Like, you don't care about the animal abuse. I care. I, I, dude, I totally care about animals. I love animals very much. But also, <laughs> I want to ride an elephant. Well, you can go to good ones. Yeah, I know, but like, they're not gonna let me ride an elephant. No, they won't. <laughs> this is the thing, because like, I'm like, I love animals very much. Um, they're all gonna die soon. Like, yeah. most of them are gonna be extinct. And like, so I you might as well ride them while they're here. I don't want to be the reason they're extinct. Yeah. But I also like. Want to be like fuck yeah, I rode an elephant. Yeah, like it, like it. Okay, it like, was awesome. It you was are awesome. a lying motherfucker if you do not want to ride an elephant. It was awesome. It was fucking amazing that, and beautiful. Man. And then I loved it so much. I started googling that thing, and then I all these videos and articles of how they train those elephants and how they abuse the fuck out of them and kill them. And I almost cried. Yeah. I was like, this is horrible. I can't like, you know what? I, I need to cheer myself to up. I need to go to a ping pong show right now. Yep. <laughs> and then I was like, great. So I've, I've just funded animal abuse and then I've just witnessed sex okay. trafficking. I'm the worst cunt ever. Which one do you feel worse about? Uh, elephants. See? For sure. See, that's funny to me. Yeah. That's very funny because I would be... I would be like, oh my god, I can't believe that person has to do this. Yeah. That's awful. And I can't believe that the elephant has to get ridden all the time. Yeah. But <laughs> the elephant's discomfort levels yeah. compared to the lady who pulling light bulbs out of her pussy, yeah. they're much lower. Yeah. Like, yo, that kid's 10. He weighs like 40 kilos. And that is a two-ton animal it's not so much the riding it's how they train them 
Yeah? Yeah, they abuse the fuck out of them to train them. Well, I don't agree with that. I'm not training elephants. Yeah, but you're you're paying for the you're paying the people who train the elephants this with like why whips I, and this is why sticks I and don't like all this animal activism stuff because it takes the fun out of it abuse. Re- like, well, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not abuse. Yeah. It's not. Uh, like, because this is what this is what I don't like. I don't yeah. want any animals to ever suffer. I don't yeah. like that. I'm not a monster. I love I love animals. Yeah. Love them so much. That's the reason I get super excited. Like, yeah. elephants, black people, midgets, love them. Yeah. Don't want anything bad to happen to any of them. Yeah. But sometimes you want to like ride one. Oh yeah, I mean I'm totally aware that I'm not like a black I'm person or a midget. <laughs> like, 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 yeah, <laughs> like yeah. an elephant. <laughs> I'm totally aware that like I'm standing up for elephants and uh, saying you can't abuse them, you can't ride them. But also I eat fuck loads of meat, so I'm a hypocrite. You can't like, save everyone. Yeah, like I definitely, if they were like, hey Rory, you are never allowed to watch sex show, or you're never allowed to ride an elephant. Yeah, I'd be like, all right, let's get these sex shows out of my life. Yeah, and fill it with elephants. Because I want, like, you know what I would love? I would love to be so rich that I could have my own elephant. So then I knew it got treated right. Yeah. Then I'd ride it. That'd be good. Yeah. Or even better, uh, so rich that you can have your own elephant and a trainer to teach it to put on a sex show. <laughs> <laughs> and you just have an elephant sex show in your house and you know that it's all wholesome and organic. So it's fine. Fuck, I just think elephants are so dope. They're beautiful. Like, it's like it's like dolphins yeah. as well. They're like... Like I, I, I would love to go swimming with dolphins. Yeah, I'm not gonna go swimming with dolphins because they rape. I can see that. Yeah, you know I can see the abuse. Yeah, yeah. In the dolphin, I'm like, yeah. yo, this dolphin's got no space. Yeah, and like that, like that kid over there is like putting his finger in the blowhole. Like, yeah. no, I don't yeah. like this. But if I see dolphins like in the in the wild, in the wild, I'm I'm gonna try and catch it. Yeah, but those ones rape. The I, dolphins people, rape. People say this. It's true. They've proven it with science. Dolphins Dolphins are one of the only other animals other than us that fuck for fun. Yes. And a lot of that fun includes rape. Yes, but if a dolphin did try to fuck you, yeah. would you let it? Um, I mean, just for the bit, yeah. So just then, so I could tell the story. So they don't rape. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you fucking got me there. <laughs> All right. They yeah, do I, rape each other, though. Yeah, I definitely... I like I don't want anything to happen bad to happen to animals. Like I because the tiger exhibition there as well. Like the tiger Man, kingdom. That's I did supposed that to be too. like heinous. I did that too. And I like I went I was young and we just did like the generic white tourism thing. Yeah. And I and I just uh, in a week I contributed to the sex trafficking, animal abuse, tiger abuse and destroying culture and probably the environment we chucked that in there too. Oh yeah. I Thailand's just, not an environmentally like, friendly place. No, it's like if you don't actively avoid harming shit when you're a tourist, you just get it all done in a week. I feel like the so, tigers was pretty fucked. Cuz South Southeast Asia especially is like a very interesting culture when it comes to like exploitation. I don't get, I don't know what it is about Asian culture, but they don't give a fuck about animals. They don't, they, ne- they don't give a fuck. I feel like there's certain ones. There's, but Japan, China, they, like hor- horrible records with it. They don't care at all. And I think it's just because they have too many people to give a fuck about anything other. Well, I mean, I guess like if the poverty line's so low, like for example, like, yeah. you know, Thailand and, and like Malaysia and stuff like that, where like people are cooking fucking scorpions over, yeah. over a, like a sewer drain. Like, yeah, okay. Give a fuck about the scorpion. We've got, uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose like, that we as white people, we have the time to worry about oh, animals. Oh, yeah, it's such a, uh, like, looking after animals is a very yeah. white thing to it's do. It's such a, fir- like, a first world thing yeah. where everyone everyone else is like, if it breathes, kill it so we can eat it because we might not get to eat tomorrow. Yeah, 100%. And, like, if Asian people cooking street meat were as cute as elephants, yeah, they probably would have a nice house. That's true. That's straight up, man. Like that's, that's true. It's just a, it's like the the level of cuteness is just like a white people like, yeah. like that's we determine how we are going to yeah. like look after this person by how cute it is. Yeah, for sure. It's like yo, like bunny rabbit, bum, cute, straight up the top there. No yep. one's killing any bunny rabbits. You t- you tell someone you have like rabbit soup. Yeah, yeah, like people oh are like, God. oh my, how, how dare you kill it's a little bunny? Little bunny. It's like there's billions of these things, and also that well, that's true. That's like only cute animals or animals that are cute when they're young get saved. Yeah, you've never seen fuck like that's why lobsters are still today all oh, around bro. the world getting boiled yeah. alive. No one gives a fuck. You eat a crab. And that's just that's just how yeah. you do it. I I didn't know that that's how they killed the lobsters by just chucking them in oh, boiling yeah, that's, water. That makes them uh, super tasty. 
When yeah, but you, like, surely you could kill it first. Nah, it makes it tastier. Why? Because it's still alive. It's fresh. Yeah, but you could kill it like a second before you put it in. Chop its head off at least. Man, you don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's lobster. It's ugly as shit. Yeah, Looks true. like some alien it's dick. It's ugly. Fuck it. Straight away. You ugly? We're going to... In the pan. Boil you to death. That's it, straight away. We're like, we, <laughs> we're like squid as well. You yeah. Have the squid squid. And stuff. No oh, one cares on. about squid. No one cares about those things. Is there an ugly like land animal that do- no one cares about? Bugs, I guess. Um, no one cares about bug rights, huh? Because they're not cute. That's I find that interesting as well. You know, the, like like vegans and stuff are just like, yeah. But you know, they have a can of rail in their in their pants. Yeah, like what what what? Where's the line yeah. with killing an animal? Like, because we definitely kill animals all the time. Oh yeah, for not sure. Like personally, I'm not like running around the streets with a hunting <laughs> knife looking for foxes. Even uh, even like vegans do. Like if you if you get food from a farm you're paying the people that kill all the animals to make sure that the food doesn't get eaten by animals right yeah yeah 100%. it's interesting um have you ever killed an animal ever killed anything no but i wouldn't be against it if it was for food yeah i think i could do it killed a few birds and stuff yeah but like that's when they've like flown i'm not like <laughs> again i'm not a psychopath gonna say well, i feel yeah. like by the end of the podcast, podcast going pretty good and yeah. then it just like turns into me being like i love black people i hate birds <laughs> 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 no like i've like i had to kill like a few things because they're injured or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Like a kangaroo on the side of the road and stuff like that. How did you kill a kangaroo? The rock. Really? Yeah. You know. Like, so did you hit it? I didn't hit it, but it was like on the road. So like you got like you know like you got basically pull it off the road. Yeah. And then and you like, what? You just bashed its head in with a rock. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It's dude. It's like it's yeah. so gnarly. You're I mean, like, but yeah, you got to do it. Well, what else? I do just leave it there until it gets run over by another thing. You know. So like you got to pull Fuck. it off, pull it off the hectic. road so no one runs over it check the pouch to see if there's like still a little joy in there yeah so you can kill yeah. that as well and then <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. um make sure it's okay and yeah. like then you're like all right this thing is sorry doing, like, mate excruciating amounts of pain like what, yeah. are you, what are you gonna do you're like oh well fucking yeah i guess that's what you're gonna it. do huh you're gonna hit it with something yeah yeah or like with, it, with it like a with it, like a budgie this budgie that flew in my window one time yeah and it was like Making gnarly noises, like yeah. I can hear it like breathing. And yeah, like, like its wings all up like this, and it's yeah. like, like definitely gonna die. You're like, all right, cool, get a shovel, and just like give it a. But that's easier because that's small. Like I, like I imagine if you bashing the brains out of that kangaroo, oh, yeah. if I'm then coming down the road <laughs> and I just see you. <laughs> Killing a kangaroo. Oh, I didn't God. see the car that hit it yeah. first. All I see so is some gnarly. random guy just fucking killing a kangaroo. It's definitely the biggest thing I've killed. Yeah, yeah. that's a big thing to yeah, kill. It is, yeah, like the, I've like I would me. I've done a couple humans. Yeah, <laughs> a couple, couple of little humans. Yep. Nah, it's so intense. Cause like even with the bird, like you can see facial expression. Fuck. Cause you're like, I didn't know birds. Yeah. I thought all they had was like. Yeah. Like eye movements, but like when it's like, yeah, you're like, oh my fucking, like, k- quick, kill it, yeah, like, kill it, like it's 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 hurt for its own good, yeah. Um, I want to kill a chicken, yeah, like I want to like, <laughs> mate, you're gonna get to the end of this podcast, and it, all the comments <laughs> gonna be like, I think Rory's gonna move on to humans in the next two weeks because no. you're like, fuck elephants. <laughs> I want to. I support the sex trade. I've killed a kangaroo. I killed a bird. I know. You know. I'd love to kill a chicken. And then after I scratch that off list, maybe a couple of gophers. No. I. I. I want. I'd want to. I want to. This is the reason why I want to kill a chicken. And this is how I want to kill a chicken. I want to kill. I want to like raise it. Yeah. I want to like give it a name. Yeah. And then like get held close to it. Yeah. And then like (laughs) betray it. (laughs) Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Not betray it. But well, like, yeah, for sure. I mean, if you it trusts you, fucking, oh, like, you know, and kill it, and then then defeather it, yeah, and then like cook it, yeah, and like fully eat it, because like. So you just want to recreate that Simpsons episode about the lobster? I just feel as though I, because I haven't killed anything on purpose. You think you're disconnected from the process? Yeah, I think I'm disconnected yeah. from 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 what food is. Yeah, like I'm like, oh, food is food, yeah. animals is animals, and like I would really like. To to be able to be like, no, animals and food are the same thing. And so I want to respect the, the food more. I want to respect yeah. the animal more. And I feel like by killing one, I'd be able to respect it more. Because well, then I would like yeah, understand I mean, it. I and guess also, if, you, if, if, if I can't kill it, like yeah. if I can't, then yeah. I'm like, I can't eat chicken anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Good if I'm test. like, I'm looking at like, like 
if you can't do it yourself, Popeye or, you, or Kentucky or yeah. whatever the fuck I've called my chicken. And I'm like, all right, me and you, we're best friends. We've been best friends for ages. Like, I've, yeah. like you've helped me through stuff. But like now, little dude, I'm like, hungry. Yeah, it's time for you to go. And if I can't kill it, yeah, I'm vegan now. And yeah, I, and I hate myself. I think that's fair. So that's why I want to kill stuff, not because I'm an animal. Yeah, no, I think there's there is an element that that I'm interested in of like hunting and for your own food, killing yeah. something for you to eat. But I would just be worried about like if I went out hunting like I don't know deer or something, I'd be scared about killing it the wrong way. The wrong way, yeah, not yeah, doing 100%. it fast. Yeah, you know, because a chicken's pretty easy to kill. You just yeah, grab yeah. my neck and like throw. You it could punch it and kill it. Yeah. But like a like a a cow or something. Yeah, a deer. You yeah. got to shoot it in the right place, otherwise it could get away with just an arrow in it. Yeah. Oh, that's so bad. Anyway, with that horrible thought, do you want to get into miscellaneous bit at the end? We're going to answer some emails. Sent yeah, let's by do listeners it. Who need some life advice? So I've got two bangers for you, Rory. I okay. think you would like these. Um, kill it. Whatever the answer. <laughs> whatever the question is, kill it. What should I do with my bird? Give it to Rory. Kill it. <laughs> um, okay. So. Here we have uh, this question. We've got the subject line, banger. V-Cal friend fucked my mum. What? V-Cal friend fucked my what's mum. A v- what's V-Cal? V-Cal is like TAFE. Do you have that? Oh, like that's trade school. so much worse. Right? Be like, a university friend. Yeah. At least he'd take her out on a date. Yeah, 100%. Like, straight up, you're like, Your engineering student fucked my mum. She's moving up. Yeah. <laughs> A friend would just take her, you know, to give her give her half Dude, a beer and then not even, bro. Like, he's cu- like, how old, does it say how old this kid is? Um, well, V Cal is like uh, years eleven and twelve, so like 17, 18. 17. And you fucked one of your mates' moms. That's awesome. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. Like, I I want to meet the dude who did it, who fucked the the, the this kid's this new kid, dad, obviously. this kid's mom. All right. Uh, so what, what? What's the question? Like, I'm, I'm a, like, or is that just a statement? No, <laughs> is that's how you opened up. Imagine if that was it. That, that's it. <laughs> that's what do you reckon? That's the question. He All starts right. it off like, "Yo, V can't fuck my mom." Anyway, how can I keep my chicken season? <laughs> <laughs> G'day, Lewis. It's Blake. Um, so the title gave away. Uh, I went to TAFE to complete my year eleven and twelve, and I'm truly ashamed about that. Um, during my time studying, I met a girl named Stacy I had previously known as she was in my class before I dropped out of high school. Um, during the time between then and now, she had become a raging lesbian. Oh! oh! <laughs> this okay. is the best question ever! All right. This just yo, took a wild yo, turn. Not only okay. This, dude, I, but, this like, is in my great. Head, in my head, all I'm thinking is like, there's some fucking dude called like, this like is Jez. And yep. he's got like a neck tattoo of like <laughs> one of his like grandmas or yep. something. And he's just came around like fixing the deck. And yep. he's just like smashed smashed this dude's mum. But it's not. Oh, fuck. Like, this is awesome. Oh, okay. is his, I wonder if his mum was gay in the first place. Ooh. You know? Let's find out, man. So during the time between then and now, she'd become a raging lesbian. Literally denim vest clad butch lesbian. Great. So she's more manly than you are. Um, eventually me fuck my chicks too <laughs> probably <laughs> probably me and Stacy got, got into the habit of hanging out outside TAFE partaking in drugs and underage drinking together and having uh, the best time terrorizing Geelong of course it's Geelong, Geelong. um because we had to travel for TAFE, we eventually made a habit of occasionally staying in each other's houses peri- periodically so we could give each other lifts. Oh, that's so funny. Amazing. And she's like, she's like, yo, I'm, I'm just going to go. Yeah. I've got the couch ready for you. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. I won't be needing that. Dude. Do you oh, mean- no, I've, seen this, I've seen this part of the movie. I'm just going to the toilet. I'll be back in like 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> During the time she stayed at my house, she would spend most of her time talking to my mum and they eventually became friends and would frequently chat on Facebook. Gee, this mum is killing it. Dude. This went on for a few months until one day, Stacy said she wasn't feeling well, so would stay at my house until she could get a ride home. So she skipped tape. She didn't go to tape with you. You know who looked after her? Your mum. That is so... Awesome. This is so alpha. This is the most alpha shit I've ever heard of. This is great. Is so, there any more to it? Or oh, is this, yeah. Yeah. Um, how about until she get a ride home? I went to TAFE and didn't hear from Stacy all day, so I just assumed she went home and crashed. I was wrong. Nah, she stayed at home and smashed. Oh, yeah. 
I got home that afternoon and flung open the lounge room door as I desperately needed to poo. Oh, please tell me he walked in on them. <laughs> as I barged into the house and charged for the hallway, out of the corner of my eye, I caught these two fleshy blobs. <laughs> I turned to find my mum bent over the couch and Stacy with a massive at least eight inch strap on flopping around as she frantically looked for something to cover up with. Stacy ran out of the house and I spent the rest of the year unable to look my mother in the eye. Yeah, it's not your mum now, it's Stacy's mum. Fuck. She got it going on. Stacy stopped showing up to tape after that. We never spoke again. Occasionally, we see each other down the street, but neither of us acknowledge the other person's existence. Have a shit one, Blake. Bro. That, dude, that's so good. That is crazy. One of my friends. Eight inch. Your mum got fucked by your lesbian friend with an eight inch strap on and you walked in on it. That is amazing. How funny is it that the strap on that this chick has fucked your mum with? It's probably bigger than your dick. <laughs> <laughs> like you have uh, got you have yeah. not got an ounce of masculinity Dude. in that at all. You like you can't you can't even be angry at it because then you're a bigot. Yeah. Like because <laughs> like immediately if you're like, hey, this is fucked, you're like, oh well, you hate lesbians. <laughs> like you also, don't want your mum to be happy. Yeah. Also, yeah. Like you're not allowed to say anything because your mum's like, uh, this is my house, yeah. and under my house you have my rules. Bring more friends over. <laughs> like there's like there's like you have no there's That's nothing you can crazy. say in that. Plus, also, like, a friend of mine um, made out with yeah. uh, another friend of mine's mum. But, Oof. like, he was, I, he was like, 20... I think he was probably, like, 26, 27. That's not as bad. It's still, like, you're a shit friend. Yeah. But it's not as weird. 100%. Shit friend, Shout shit Shout out mom. Josh Mills, kissing people's mums. Um, that's who it was. Kiss that's mom. great. Kiss my best mate, Dylan's mum. Um, Fuck. Yeah, on. it was so funny. That and, sucks. But, like, the thing is, like... It never goes away. Yeah. Like you, like Josh always oh, kissed still Dylan's mum. Yeah. They, we're all still great friends, oh, but it no. comes up all like, Fuck. it's like, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. You like, have to. Like whenever Josh would come over to See, Dylan's that's house. What I, that's what like, I mean. I feel like the worst person in the scenario is definitely the mum. So it's like still, it's a shit friend move, but the mum knows that she's destroying a friendship just because she's horny. Nah. She could get on Tinder. Nah. I yep. feel like it's, like you said, it's a big alpha move from the mum and I really dig it as a, a mum move you support it i support it so if your mum kiss nah, one of your my mum wouldn't do that to me but but if she <laughs> did if she did i bet that's what he said i bet the last thing he thought in all eternity if someone went to him and said yeah, hey so. mate do you think that what your you mother Stacey and your mum are doing right now yeah watching that probably El going home word. do you reckon that your mum would ever fuck let one of your female friends fuck her with a strap on you'd be like nah my mum would never do that because clearly I exist she's straight Man. next minute he comes home that's so good I wonder if it's actually real uh, I wonder dude, if it's a real one you wouldn't you wouldn't make it up some of the stories that I hear on this like you can't fucking make it up nah I can tell when they're fake I can tell because you know why because they're spelled properly yeah? Yeah, because you can tell they sat down and crafted it. <laughs> I'm going to trick Lewis. This was just written from an iPhone. See, I was loving, I was loving the whole passion. thing. Up, up until the dil walking in on the dildo bit, I was like fully, like this is this is 100% real and this is awesome. And then I guess when the strap on dildo came on, I was like, this might be a bit far-fetched with the uh, dildo. I think the, the, that I would agree with you, except he said they've been talking on Facebook for months. So yeah. they planned it. And, and so she was funny. like, right, you fake sick, bring the strap on, and we'll do this thing. Which one of your friends would you let your mum fuck? <laughs> you got to pick one. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> See you later, guys. Is there another question? Is that the only question? Uh, we can do one more yeah, if you want. Yeah, one more. Fuck one it. One more? Okay. Um, That's great, though. That's that someone awesome. sent that in. With I don't their, think we're going to top it. Name and email address attached to that, so like we could easily go on Facebook and find this dude's mom. Dude, I do that all the time. <laughs> Honestly, guys, I, I never, I never out them publicly, but every time I get a fuck story, I search their email. Yeah. I go through. I try and work That's out because they often they send me fake names, but yeah. I have their email. I work yeah. it out every time. It's fucking awesome. Um, okay, have you got time to do another one? Uh, yeah, totally. Okay, cool. Here's time. I'll do anything. All right. I left my girlfriend for her best friend and she's not happy. You dog cunt. <laughs> you dog. You do I like how you're angry about this and not the fucking person who fucked the mum. No, that's great. Everyone's single. People have fun. It's all yep. good. Big hugs. 
Okay. But right now, this guy dumped 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 a girlfriend for his, for his fucking best mate. Yeah, dog act. I hope I hope the girl you dumped fucks your mom. <laughs> <laughs> G'day, cunt. Background info: About three weeks ago, I broke up with my girlfriend. Her and I had been dating for three years and had a good, stable relationship. We never fought, etc. When we broke up, we both made it explicit that it was because we'd both grown feelings for other people in our friendship group. Okay. Oh, well, this is fine. Yeah. She liked one of my mates and I liked her best friend. Hashtag orgy. That's the solution, yeah. really. You yeah. both fucked up. You shouldn't have ended it. You just all should have fucked yeah. everyone. We both agreed it would be best if we left each other before things got messy and said we didn't mind who each other dated. That is a fucking lie. Yeah, it's a big See, lie. All, I haven't read this email already. I know. This is why she's angry, Rory. Because he got to fuck her friend and she couldn't fuck the other friend. I feel like I that is that ne that never happens. Never is the dude <laughs> like, yep. man, I keep fucking all these bitches and... My ex-girlfriend can't get any dick. Never is that the story. Yeah, it's like, yo, true. she hot. Girl, she all girl. girls need to be like, uh, hello, would anyone like to have sex with me? They've got a line around the block no matter yeah, what they look like. Up. Yeah, 100%. Because every girl, no matter what you look like, you, you're never ugly because you are definitely someone's fetish. No, there's definitely, like, there's definitely some ugly girls out there. Yeah, but those girls are someone's fetish. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, which, not, not I mean, mine. you don't really want to be a fetish, but hey, if you can take what you can get. <laughs> Um, since then, I've grown, I've grown close to her friend and we've been talking and all that. This, along with some flirting and light joking, uh, blah, blah, uh, has caused my once stable and generally nice ex to become quite jealous and controlling. She called me for over an hour saying that I can't be with her friend, telling me how long I should wait before finding another person, uh, even sending me a wiki how article about managing breakups. My question is, what should I do? Stop talking to my ex completely, set boundaries, or just stop pursuing a relationship with her friend like a decent person? Well, see, that's that's like he's already answered like his own question because there's yep. like there's like there's three or four options, yes. and they all like you become a different person each one of them. It's yes. like, all right, there's the, there's the nice, respectable, decent thing to do, and that's be like, all right, all, all three of us can sit down and be mature and have a little chat about this yep. and see if we can all find some sort of like level playing field. Uh -huh. And then there's like, nah, fuck that bitch. And <laughs> like, you broke up, who cares? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, you broke up, you obviously don't like each other. She said she has feelings for someone else, you have feelings for someone else. Like, you're like, I think you guys had the, you guys, here's the thing. This is classic woman shit where you both agreed the rules. Both of you had the mature conversation. You've done it, right? Both of you went, we need to break up because we both want to have sex with other people. And then you went, I am playing by the rules that both of us made up and now she's angry about it. Nah, man, she's in the wrong. New girl's hotter than the old girl. Ah, there's your That's problem. That's what it is. That's what, That's it, what it is. is. The, the, the old girlfriend's like, oh, I was totally fine Yep. when you were going to fuck all these ugly fat chicks. But then she lost weight. <laughs> and then like, yeah, one, the one girl that like she thought yep. he'd never be able to get. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, That's what I mean. She like, changed the rules and she's all, angry about it. They're fucking like the whole time they're together. She probably like lets them two just hang out together yep. in like by themselves yep. in their own room. Like, no, you guys hang out. No worries. She would never fuck you, bro. She would never, you are so, you're like six. She's like 12. Yep. She'd never go fuck you. And then one and day. And then all she sees is, haha, you're funny. Yeah. And then, oh fuck. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to happen. It's good. Um, what I would do personally is um, probably send long-winded text messages yep. that are essay length um, that I've crafted yep. uh, very, very, very uh, specifically. Um, that won't work, obviously, because it yep. never does. Yep. Um, I get long messages back. We'll go through a, a random back and forth. Yep. Um, we'll probably try and catch up. Uh, I'll realize that like I really don't like this person. Yeah. And then I'd be like, all right, let's go back to the new girl. <laughs> and then like within a week, I'd be like, fuck all this drama. And I'd just like leave them both. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I'd be that like, yeah, that's you, too much drama. You either need to leave them both first or have your fun and leave them both. Because either way, it's going to end in disaster. You are f trying to fuck 75% of your friendship group. It's not going to work, bro. But this is, I assume, like, this guy's probably, like, same age as the dude, like, 17, 18. Yeah. Like, 19. Sounds very high school. Well, it's, you, everyone just fucks their friends. Yeah. Like, in high school and, like, and, yeah. and like in uni, it's like, oh, yeah, we met, we, like, we hung out for, like, a couple months. We're, like, pretty good friends. And she's got great tits, so it just made sense. We started, we started fucking, and then we started dating, and then we were like, oh, no, I kind of, I kind of like her best friend. And then she's like, no, I kind of like your best friend. You're like, all right, cool. Yeah. So, like, that goes on. Like, one of my best mates, 
at the moment, yeah, like pretty much his girlfriend left him, or they split up, whatever, to go date my other best friend. Yep. And like we're and all they still know it, they know each other. Yeah, they all know each other. We're yep. all still friends. Like it's all good. Like if you can be mature, like yeah. you could just be like, yeah, well, I don't own anyone. You know. Yeah, I've had that where, where me and a friend have had sex with the same girl. Yeah. yeah. And I was I was dating her. Yeah. And then and then they dated them, and then both of us were like, oh, she is a bit crazy, huh? And then. Fist That's more that likely it. what's gonna happen. It's yeah. like the dudes are gonna be like, "Oh yeah, that chick was pretty crazy," and then like all the girls are gonna be like, huh, "Dude's dick was pretty small anyway." And yeah. so like that's it. It's Nothing like both the, both parties just get written off, and like no one cares in like a year anyway. As long as you're not a, uh, as long as you're not doing anything maliciously, do you, bro? Yeah. But if you want to avoid the drama, don't fucking do it. Yeah. My don't advice would be, <laughs> go hang out with Stacy and her new mum. <laughs> <laughs> because you can have an amazing experience alright that's the end of the podcast thanks very much for listening guys thanks for coming on Rory where can people find you uh, I am at the Melbourne Sydney Brisbane Adelaide Perth and Fremantle um, most of October but I'm going to Europe in, Great. in a week so just google Rory Lowe yeah just google me sweet and if you want to catch me on tour I start in two weeks no slide seasons on sale now loosespears.com slash gigs Sunshine Coast Gold Coast and Gimpy are up first I'll see you there <laughs> there's a place called Gimpy yeah it is and I've only sold 10 tickets <laughs> <laughs> see you there